Good morning, everyone. Welcome to episode number 53 of the Project 2020 show. On the release schedule for today, we have Ermsey releasing his Tony Gwynn and Keith Shore dropping his vertical Sandy Koufax. We must also talk about what happened yesterday on the printer announcements from the Monday cards. At the same time, where do I think the Wednesday cards are going to land this time tomorrow morning? A lot to cover, plus more in one quick second. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you for clicking on that thumbnail. I greatly appreciate it. My name is Chris, and if you want to connect with me outside this video, I'm on Twitter and Instagram at CRT underscore sports cards, and the website is CRTSportsCards.com. Also, if you want to stay up to date with all of the news and notes around Project 2020, please hit that subscribe button. But when you look at this Thursday, what are we learning? A lot of things have transpired, but it really feels like one big chessboard right now. We used to be playing checkers. It was all very straightforward. And now over the past couple of days, everything has gone to a next level. I use the word meta occasionally on this show, and it feels like we're going to another level when it comes to what are we buying from a print run? What are we buying from first and second player cards? There's a lot of things shifting right now, and it's interesting to find out. But let's take a look at what happened yesterday when it came to the Wednesday print run announcements on the Monday cards. So yesterday, card number 155, Don Mattingly, 4292 is right now the 98th ranked card, and Jackie Robinson comes in at 4046 at 102nd. So both of these print runs really surprised all of us when it came to the final number. I will say from a record perspective that Don Mattingly, this is only the third time a card has had less pre-orders and sold more at the end of the day. It's a very rare occurrence that the lower printed card out actually outsells the second card. What do we think happened? Now, some people are out there saying, because I said a lower number might happen, people bought it up. I don't think that's the case. When you look at the Twitter comments, after the card was released, people thought that it was going to be low printed. So what happened? People bought that card up. And when you do that, you drive the print run up. What we don't know right now is what is a short printed range. Is 4,000 short printed or is it only 2,000, 3,000? Who knows? But it's very simple. Everybody bought up that card and it drove it to 4,292. I don't think that's the real story because that card fell in my original range. I originally had 3.25 to 4.25 and it came in at 4.29. My mistake here, and I've done this numerous times, not numerous, I've done this a few times. When I move a range up, what I don't do is keep this, I, I don't keep the old ceiling as the floor, and then I have this gap where, where the card usually falls. So my mistake there, if I'd have kept it at 4.25 to 5.25, it'd have been a non-issue. But then on the Jackie Robinson, I'm, I was more stunned by this than I was anything else. People just left this card. They stopped buying it, and the eBay penetration came in at 2.3%. So why did they stop buying it? Maybe they never were buying it. Maybe the number was wrong from the beginning. Maybe we are now seeing the normal eBay penetration tick back up over to 2.4%, 2.5%. We weren't there yesterday. We were only at 2.3%. Or maybe people saw that I said, hey, it's going to do 5 to 6, and they quit buying it. I don't think that's likely. I think it actually is a lot simpler than that. Do pre-order totals really matter right now? When you think back to a month ago, six weeks ago, they really mattered for a print run projection. Whether it was 110, 60, 50, you could really take that data and make it a certain range. Right now, it really feels like every card that we're gonna see right now is gonna be 4,000 to 5,000 other than the real big cards like the Jeter today, that's going to be higher. All I know right now is that I am 0 for 6 after my last 6 projections and I was 6 for 6 before. When I look back at all of the data that I've been projecting on these, I'm basically like 50%. So if you're using my ranges for buying decisions, just understand I'm 50% right. I'm not 85, 80%. All I have stretches where I go where I do really well and then do really bad. So hang tight with me. But like I said a second ago, on the Ted Williams by Andrew Thiel. Right now to me, 4,000 to 5,000, I don't know how that card gets over 5.1. I also don't see how it gets under, under 4,000 when you look at the Don C card from last week. We'll see what we'll find out. People have come up to that card a little bit. I think people are warming up to it. People really liked Andrew Thiel's explanation of the card before. So I still think that card gets in the 4,000 range. Now on the Derek Jeter, I'm sticking with 10 to 12,000 for a couple of different reasons. 
To me, on Derek Jeter, his floor is 94, 9,500. Those are where his first two cards printed. I'm ignoring the grotesque card at 65, 11. But when you think of the two giveaways from FDOT, you think of Derek Jeter overall, and then you look at the Mariano Rivera that printed last week with Ben Baller, that was barely over 12,000. So I don't know how we get over 12,000 with this Jeter, but at the same time, I think we definitely get over 10,000. This card is gonna be very interesting. If I miss here, I think I'm gonna overshoot, and that's what I do a lot here. I overshoot a lot on these pre-order projections. I could easily see this card coming in in the eight to 9,000 range, but I don't think that's very likely. The numbers tell me that, but the emotion, which is probably wrong here, tells me it's not gonna do that. So 10 to 12,000, I'm sticking with Jeter, and I'm sticking with Thiel at four to five on his Williams. Now let's talk about one of the two cards that's being released today, and let's tackle this Sandy Koufax by Keith Shore first. If I had to pick a favorite, it's not gonna be this Keith Shore, but at the same time, on today's cards, I don't really have a favorite. I'm not gonna be buying either one of these cards. None of them really speak to me. I'm not collecting Shore. I think at least I probably am collecting Shore because of my Griffies, but that's another story altogether. But let's take a look at his Keith Shore Sandy Koufax real quick. So yes, it is vertical. And for anyone out there who is collecting a horizontal Koufax, of course, this is not the first horizontal one, but I understand people out there are mad or frustrated with the fact it's not horizontal, but this is a great thing about this set. So this is his ninth card overall. And of course, we know the Griffey, we know the Mariano, we know the Bob Gibson. He has some of the most iconic cards in the set, just from the visuals. And this is why Keith Shore is in this set. From a print run perspective, this does not need to be said again, but his Griffey is number one at 99,177. And then his Mark McGuire comes in at 1199. Now when you look, take a look at Sandy Koufax, this is his ninth card overall. We have five horizontals and we have four verticals. His highest printed card is the Natural at 43,147. And his lowest printed card is 1,135, which is card number two, which is done by Jacob Rochester. When I look at these cards and go, what are my favorite Keith Shore and what are my favorite What's my favorite Sandy Koufax? On the key shore, it is the Frank Thomas because he was the first artist to do a no name on front variation. So thank you for that. And then on Sandy Koufax, it is gonna be the Fuchi design because of not having a face and it being king of the hill. It is a close, there is a close second here with the Tyson Beck card, but if I had to pick one to keep forever, it's gonna be the Fuchi. I'd be curious though in the comments, what are your favorite cards today and what are your favorite cards of these artists and of these players? So now taking a look at the market overall when you think of first player, second player, and then the newly formed Forgotten Seven. One continuous theme is forming, especially on the lower printed cards. And when you think back to our, our talk about pre-orders, do they really matter being on a chessboard? If I move left, do you move right? Are we really moving anywhere? We're not moving forward at the same time. What's happening right now is what I talked about a couple days ago. The buy it now prices are on these cards are rather high on the lower printed stuff and people are not moving up to that level. The cards are sometimes moving up, they're sometimes moving back down. But there's this, this shifting of the sands right now of who's gonna flinch first. Are the buyers gonna flinch first or the sellers gonna flinch first? If the sellers flinch, that means their buy it nows are gonna come down. If the buyers flinch, that means they're gonna come up to the prices. But right now when you look at first and second player pricing all together, very few cards sold yesterday and also on the Forgotten 7, only one of those cards sold on eBay yesterday. So it's very interesting to see how there was very little movement on this two, on, on Wednesday for these cards. We'll see if this picks up. I know there are auctions ending today and if those continue to rise and come off, we'll see some activity today. But it'll be very curious over the weekend. I know it's Thursday right now, but over Friday, Saturday, Sunday, do we see the sellers flinch first or the buyers? I tend to think it's gonna be the buyers, but we will see what happens in the next couple of days. So let's take our eye off the market and take our eye to the to the new shiny object, which is gonna be the Ermsey Tony Gwynn. And look, Tony Gwynn has not had that much success in this set overall, just because, in my opinion, it's because he isn't with us anymore. So there's this group of people who are buying this set who don't really have context to who Tony Gwynn is. You have to be of a certain age to really understand how great he was and, and what he meant to the game. But when you now mix him with Ermsey, Ermsey who is essentially not blowing up, but he's really caught the attention of fans. How does this card do? It's gonna be very interesting to see where the Preeters land in a couple of days, or tonight actually. But let's take a look at this card and then let's look at 
Ermsey and then Tony Gwynn. Tony Gwynn's head is in the card. It's not on his body, but it's there. This is just a great Ermsey design. I love how the baseball is looking up at Tony Gwynn saying like, oops, I'm sorry for taking your head. I think it's just a great thing. And you have the crowd in the background. There's a lot of cool things going on in this card. Now, when you look at Ermsey all together, this is his ninth card in the set. He of course has the most famous trout, which is card number four. But on a print run perspective, his Derek Jeter is the best right now at 24908. That's a lot of cards, but it's actually not a lot of cards when you think of the bubble we came through a few months ago. And then his lowest card is that Dwight Gooden, one of the Forgotten Seven, at just 1,864. Now, taking a look at Tony Gwynn, this is now his eighth card, and he has had some really great cards come out recently compared to his first couple of cards. His highest printed card is that Matt Taylor at 31,030, and his lowest printed card is 1,302. I think he suffers from the fact that Natural and Joshua Vides came out together. They look similar. People lost focus of Gwyn. And now when you say, Chris, what are your favorites on Tony Gwynn and Ermsey? When it comes to Tony Gwynn, it is the grotesque. I really like the orange color of the Padres, old school 80s color. I really, really like that card. And then on Ermsey, it's really surprising here, but I really like his Ted Williams. So you go back the last couple of shows, I have had three artists up and I've said Ted Williams every single time. And I'm not even collecting Ted Williams. I probably should be collecting Ted Williams, but I am not. But at the moment for Ermsey, it is Ted Williams. So here it comes. Pre-order projections for the Wednesday cards for tomorrow morning. Right now, as I said, I'm 0 for 6. I got the other hat on today. I'm going to try to do different things and get these ranges. But it's going to kind of wrap up the show in a nice little bow and make some sense of what I was saying at the beginning. So on the pre-orders for Cal Ripken and Frank Thomas. Cal Ripken, after 24 hours, came in at 60, and Frank Thomas came in at 53. I think those numbers in this current economy, in this current market, are exactly the same. They don't mean anything different. They used to make a difference a few months ago. Now the seven difference does not mean anything. But I am also going to say, I really think that the Frank Thomas, even though it has lower pre-orders right now than Cal Ripken, there is a strong possibility that that Frank Thomas sells more than Cal Ripken just because those numbers are so similar and the old man Allen group is not as strong as Tyson Beck. So regardless of the fact that he has less pre-orders, I think he's going to sell more. But here's the tricky part. The ranges for me right now are exactly the same. 4.5 to 5.5. I don't see how either one of these cards gets to 6 or even the high 5s. I like 4.5 to 5.5 based on everything I can see at this moment. Now, I will see how the pre-orders come in today. I will see if I change those numbers. But right now, for me, I like on these cards 4.5 to 5.5. And it goes back to my earlier point. I don't know how we get out of this 4 to 5K range with all the cards going forward outside of an ugly card or outside of a big name player. I think we're going to pound that section right now and we're going to bloat that 4 to 5K print run and potentially make it not worth more than 40 bucks in the future. There might be too many cards in this range, but we'll find out here in the next couple of days. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. At the same time, if you want more news and notes from me on Project 2020, please check out that playlist on the screen right now.